This video is going to go over the task attributes available in Behavior Designer. None of these attributes are absolutely required to be used. They are more just convenience, nice to have attributes. This video is going to be following the documentation that's available online. For most of these attributes, we are going to be using the Move Towards task that was created in the Writing Your Own Task video. So the very first attribute that we are going to specify is a help URL attribute that goes on top of the class definition and it just specifies a URL for that particular task which contains extra documentation about that task. So in this case we're specifying this URL which just happens to point towards the parallel task but it really doesn't matter what it's pointed to. And then when we go back to behavior designer, if we let it update, this little dock icon on the task inspector will update and it will point towards that URL. So just brought in my browser so we could see it pointing to the correct one and there's that same link. The next attribute is the task icon attribute and what this does is it allows you to change the icon from this default icon. In this case, since this is an action task, it will have this little play icon. But we want, it, we want to change that so it's more appropriate for the particular task and we can just specify a path relative to the project folder of that icon. So if I look in the project folder, we can see that I have this editor folder and then I have dark move towards icon and light move towards icon. I have two different versions because it is it's used for the theme that you're currently using or the skin color that you're currently using of Unity. So you can see I have this little keyword called skin color and Behavior Designer will just replace that with whatever the current skin is. And when I go back to that task we can see it updated with the correct icon. The next attribute is the task category attribute and that allows you to specify a custom category for that task. So let me go back and first show you where the task currently is at. I did a search for move and the very first item is this move towards task and you can see that it's right under the actions category. If I want to change that so that it's more appropriate for the particular task, in this case I'm specifying video attributes, the slash specifies a subcategory and then I go back to Update Behavior Designer. We will see that the Move Towards task moved to that particular category. The last attribute that goes on the top of the class definition is this Task Description attribute. And this allows you to specify a short description of what the task does. This description will then show up on the bottom left of Behavior Designer when the task is selected. So it moved towards a specified point. That's the description that I put in. This can also be turned off in the Behavior Designer preferences. The next attribute is the linked task attribute. And for that, I'm going to use a different task. I'm going to use the task guard task. And I'm going to bring in two of these. And if we open up the code for that, we can see that just like any, or it has a field call with a value type of task guard, it's an array, and the field name is linked task guards. So this isn't really anything special to begin with because when Behavior Designer shows that field, it will allow you to specify another task for that field. And this just, this doesn't require an attribute. There's nothing special about that. The thing that is special about this task or this linked task attribute, which we specified right here, is that when you link the second task, the first task will be linked as well from that second task. So in this case, this task guard task linked this second task guard task. Well, since we have the linked task attribute, when I click on this second task guard task, it will be linked to the first task guard as well. And this works even for even when you bring in another like third task. So I, 
I'm going to specify this third task guard task should specify this very first one. Well, when it specifies the first one, since this first task guard is linked to the second task guard, this third task guard should then be linked to both the first and the second one. So if I click on it, we will see that it's now linked to both the first and the second one. When I click on another task or another task guard, we'll see that it's linked to that third one as well. So it's just a way to keep all the linked tasks synchronized. The next for the next attribute, I'm going to use the real-time strategy sample project because the, actually let me let it play a little bit so I get a little bit of money. This unit task has a task, or this unit behavior tree has a field called the attack behavior tree reference and this is subclassed from the behavior tree reference task. The reason why it's subclassed is because we added a field called the shared transform target field which has an attribute of inherited field. Inherited field allows your base behavior tree to share the value with any external behavior tree that it references. In order for it to share that value it has to have three things. It has to have the same type, the same name, and also the inherited field attribute. So if we then go to the behavior tree that this task is referencing, which is the attack behavior tree, I can just double click on this task to move into it. I can then look at this task, this next attack position task, and see that it also has a target field that has a value type of shared transform and it also has the attribute inherited field. So when this behavior, this external behavior tree loads, the value from the original behavior tree is going to be loaded into that tree. So let's go ahead and let it play a little bit and I will create a unit, a few units, click attack. I'm going to go into that unit and then I'm going to click on this next attack position task. We can see that it has a value of target and it got that value of target which has a value of turret so the task or the units currently attacking the turret it got that value through the let me go ahead and end this through the attack behavior tree reference task. This is especially useful in this case where prefabs cannot reference scene objects. So an alternate way of doing it would be to spec would be to like do a search or a game object find within the external behavior tree in order in order to load up that object within the scene. But this is an easier way to do it since that value was already assigned within the behavior tree beforehand. The very last attribute that I'm going to go over is the tooltip attribute and that allows you to specify a quick description of what that field does. So I'm going to go to that next attack position field or that task, click on it and if I just hover over the name it will show us what the value of that or what the description of that field is. So those are the task attributes available in Behavior Designer.